By now, we've all heard the phrase essential workers, the workers that are deemed essential to life. According to Fortune magazine, there are 14 employment categories that the DHS considers essential, critical infrastructure workers. They are categories like this, healthcare, public health, law enforcement, public safety, first responders, food and agriculture workers, energy, water, transportation, public works, communication, hazardous materials, so forth and so on. 14 different categories. In this list somewhere, and I'm going to say it's probably in the public works or hazardous material it might be, uh, are those who collect and dispose of garbage. Uh, it may be reaching or stretching a little bit, but if nobody collected our garbage, we would be in trouble. It would be more than an eyesore or an unpleasant smell. The garbage would eventually become a health risk. Now, this is not a message, although I could say that, how much I appreciate the essential workers, and especially at my house, those who every Tuesday come and haul away my garbage. But I hope you'll see it as an intro into what happened on Friday, the Friday that we call Good Friday. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. And Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our sin, if you will, garbage, has to be or had to be carried away. In the Old Testament, Yom Kippur, I'll butcher that name because I'm not Jewish, but Yom Kippur was called the Day of Atonement. It was celebrated each year to deal with the sin or the garbage of the last year. The priest would select two goats, one to be sacrificed to the Lord and one to be presented alive to the Lord and sent into the wilderness as a scapegoat. In Leviticus 16.21, we read that Aaron, the priest, shall lay both of his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the sons of Israel and all their transgressions in regard to their sins, and he shall lay them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness. So this garbage, this sin that we all have, the Old Testament says that it was dealt with in one way, Yom Kippur, of laying it on a goat. This is where we get the term scapegoat from, somebody else taking our penalty. So this scapegoat, would then be released into the wilderness as a symbol, yearly symbol, to all of the Jewish people that their sins were carried away. Enter Jesus, enter Good Friday, enter the cross. What was happening? Isaiah 53, 6 reads, All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him. So here is this good shepherd, this shepherd analogy, talking about the wayward sheep, but the verse ends with this idea. Our iniquities were laid on Jesus. The writer of Hebrews said that this way in Hebrews 7, 27, he says, Speaking of Jesus as our high priest, for it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, because this he did once for all when he offered himself up. Later in Hebrews verse, chapter 9, verse 28, we read, So Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many. So the writer of Hebrews now in the New Testament brings this into the life of Jesus our high priest, and says, all our sins were laid upon him. Peter, in 1 Peter, writes it this way, and he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds we are healed. More so than those essential workers who take away our garbage, today Jesus, on Good Friday, took away or has taken away our sins and negated the penalty of them. So, I always like to have something on Good Friday that's a hands-on, that's a let's participate and let us remind ourselves by participating of what Good Friday is all about. So, this is how I thought of this today 
as how we could all experience this in our own home. First, a garbage container, a garbage can, if you will, and then just some pieces of paper and some sort of pen. And what I would encourage you to do, individuals, family, but really practicing this individuals, and some of you parents modeling this for your kids, that's just an awesome thing to do. But you can't take on the sins of your child. We can't take on or confess the sins of our spouses or people we love. So really, it's an individual activity. But right now, I picture you in your homes, those of you with young kids sitting around as a family, you're watching this. And so grab a garbage container, some scrap pieces of paper, and some sort of writing utensil, pen, pencil, marker for each person in the family. And then maybe separate a little bit for contemplation, but then just record, if you will, some of your, your sins, some of your bad moments in life. Uh, but don't dumb them down to saying mistakes. These are sins. These are things that break the heart of God. And so you might write on your piece of paper, I lied, to someone that is a generic statement to you, hopefully, and to me especially, I, I remember. I remember when I lied. I, I remember who I lied to. I want to take this garbage and I want to place it in this garbage container. You can spend as little or as long as you want at this, but this is an object lesson. This is how we are understanding the work of Jesus on the cross. The, the garbage placed on Jesus, the, the garbage of our life, the, the sin of our life placed on him so that he might carry it away. And the final part of this will be, you, you may fill your garbage can. It, it's okay. The symbolic moment will be when you understand that you'll take this garbage can after this experience on Friday, set it aside, and in Milan, in the city of Milan, where I live, Tuesday is my garbage day. On Tuesday, the garbage people, the essential workers in my world, will come and they will carry away my sin. I'll never see it again. Now, it falls short, everyone. I'm, I'm not trying to say it, it that this is a complete analogy, if you will. Jesus, when our sins were placed on him, the Bible tells us that God forgot that God put our sin as far as the east is from the west. These sins that we're placing in here, you may remember things. You may have already confessed them, and God's already forgotten about them. But this is just an exercise to help us remember what Good Friday was all about. The Old Testament said there had to be a goat, a goat that the sins of the people were laid upon who could go off into the wilderness, the symbolism of the sins being seen and remembered no more. New Testament, this is Jesus Christ. This is our Savior, Peter says, who's bearing our sins, who the sins of our lives, past, present, and future, are laid upon, and he's carrying them away. He, he's taking the penalty by shedding his blood and dying for our sins. So I hope you see this exercise as the reason we call this Good Friday. It is Good Friday because this was essential to our lives. We couldn't have a good life without someone taking our sin. He bore our sins on his body so that we might become the righteousness of God. We are not righteous in ourselves. Jesus took our sins so that we could become his righteousness. As you practice this in your home, maybe the last thing you'll do is, is just thank God. You'll just pray and say, God, it's so wonderful to understand your work on our behalf. So I'll conclude this Good Friday little message that way. Let me pray and thank God for what he did through his son Jesus Christ on that cross. God, I thank you that Jesus was my essential, essential worker. If there's no Jesus to take my sin, the wages of that sin would have been my death. But Jesus came and took my sin, bore my sin on his body on that cross, died for my sin, shed his blood for my sin, so that today I might call this Good Friday. A good day because it reminds me that Jesus offers forgiveness through his shed blood, that my sin is, was taken on that cross. Help me not to take that lightly. Help me live to that righteousness you've called me to, 
and help me to live and ever, ever live in perfect communion, which includes confession and repentance of my sin on a daily basis so that I might become righteous, as that is by bearing your righteousness in my body. So God, I thank you for the work of Jesus who carries our sin or who carried our sin and paid for our sin. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 